Well, let's take a look at this now. Trade Union Solidarity has uh, uh, said that it's been misquoted and has not, in fact, called for a boycott on South African Airways. Reports came in that it's accused the carrier of racism, saying it failed to accept white male candidates into its cad cadet program. Well, SAA spokesperson Tlali Tlali is with us here in studio, and its Solidarity Deputy uh, General Secretary Dirk Herman is in our Pretoria studio. Just to clarify things for us this morning, uh, Tlali, a very good morning to you. Uh, let me start with Mr. Herman, if we can uh, just get visuals of him in our Pretoria studio just to clarify what he's just uh, spoken to me about off air. Uh, Mr. Hadman, you say you have not called for a boycott per se. What response do you have then to this move? Well, in the first place, we ask for a public campaign against the SAA, and that is through the several um, um, social media um, instruments. And it was interesting in, uh, that all, uh, barely in all the cases, the public said then, yes, but then we want to boycott the SAA. Um, but the fact is, what is the problem here? The problem is an absolute ex exclusion of a specific race group. Neither the Employment Equity Act nor the Constitution allows this. Now, last year in August, um, the SAA had a process where we asked for applications. On the internet, if you type in white male, it immediately dismiss your specific application. We had then a um, campaign and we had agreement with the SAA that white males can apply now for the specific cadet program. They allow then white males in the process. They flew them up, uh, up to Johannesburg, took them through a process, booked them into a hotel. Um, they were part of tests, psychometrical tests, other tests, and they created a lot of expectation and excitement among these young white guys because they thought there's a chance um, for their dreams. And then what happened, they kicked them off this time at the end of the um, process simply because of their race. That's dishonest to bring him or someone into the process and kick him off at the end. And we think it's unfair racism according to the Constitution and the Employment Equity Act. Mr. Tladi Tladi, what's your response? Is this affirmative action taken too far? Is it racist? Hardly. It is a worst form of uh, display of patriotism for anyone to boycott one's national career. He is making reference to social media uh, platforms. We are aware of some of them. He must come out clear and say that we are in support of that or not. Let's deal with the issue of racism. We find it very interesting for them to come out and accuse SAA as a state-owned company to accuse government of racism based on the statement that we have released where we give an outline as to the racial groupings and the gender composition of the 40 successful candidates. Out of that 40, we have seven white females. What form of racism is that? When they say we exclude whites, and that is what their statements say, we exclude whites when we have seven white women, first thing. Secondly, our point of departure was, for all intents and purposes, clear from the onset that we are pushing a transformation cause here. We are focusing mainly on previously disadvantaged individuals as defined in terms of the very act that he refers to, the Employment Equity Act, which includes those categories of individuals that we have referred to, including white females. Even more, there is a litany of cases, even a constitutional court decision that has dealt with a similar case. So we have a body of jurisdiction that can assist us when dealing with matters of this nature. What is unfortunate is that they create an impression that SAA is racist, how does he respond, him or Solidarity, respond to the fact that as we speak at this present moment, we have 85% of our uh, flight deck crew that is constituted by a particular race grouping. I want, to, I want to, to speak to Mr. Harman about that. I wonder if we can bring him back up. Mr. Harman, if you are still with us, taking a look at uh, those figures, in last year's figures, I think that's what you're touching on, only 15% of SAA's pilots were in fact black. One five, and those include Indians and coloreds. The rest are white and 91% of them are men. Would you agree that that situation is rather undesirable? Yes, may I just say in the beginning, that, uh, okay, I agree, it's not only racial discrimination, it seems to me it's gender discrimination as well. But then in the second place, yes, we must address that situation, but we must do it according to the Constitution and the Employment Equity Act. You can't be selective. The Constitution and the Employment Equity Act does not allow absolute exclusions like they do now. You can't 
excludes a whole racial group simply on the base of race. Mr. Yes, Herman, if I may interject can. there, my apologies for interrupting you there. He, he says seven of them are white females. How would you uh, give them advice on how to remedy the situation then? How would you like to see it sorted out so we don't see only 15% of SAA's pilots being uh, uh, blacks? In the first place, you must take all the different factors into account. Race is definitely one of the factors, but you must take into account the socio-economic position of the applicant with no doubt. You can't have an absolute exclusion. You must have a focus and a uh, um, specific focus on people from the designated group without excluding in a total way one specific race group because that is not in line with the right of equality and dignity. So you must have a more nuanced approach to um, affirmative action and not an absolute exclusion approach because that is the guidelines that the Constitution and the Empl Employment Act Equity Act actually give to us. Is there a problem in your selection uh, criteria? Is Na it flawed? None whatsoever. None whatsoever. They must stop making irresponsible outbursts and come to the table and sit with us in order to understand what the program is here. We are trying to redress you know, the injustices and the imbalances of the past. And if they sat down with us and inquired from us what is it that we are trying to do, they would understand exactly what we are doing. As I indicated initially that a point of departure is a focus on PDIs. That is not at the total exclusion of any other racial groupings. And this is how it works in critical terms. If we have about 10 slots and then you are focusing on PDIs and you are able to accommodate eight out of that ten and then you have white males who are successful you will be able to accommodate two of those in that which we you are doing secondly he makes reference to an incident which is an unfortunate one which we acknowledged that happened last year when the male applicants the white males for for, for that matter applied they were rejected that was brought to our attention. We corrected that, number one. And number two, we granted an extension for the white males to apply. However, we operate on the basis of a certain minimum numbers that we can accommodate at a time. And we have accommodated those numbers. How, including many, how many white males have you accommodated this time around? How have, many have, have, have been successful? Yeah. Let's, let's, let's not confuse issues here. We are saying previously disadvantaged individuals will be given preference. But how and many, we have, how on, many on, of them, on, how many let white me answer males have been successful? Let me though? answer your question. Mm -hmm. Understand the starting point. Mm -hmm. A premise is previously disadvantaged individuals. Mm -hmm. Will and be given we, preference. They will be given preference. Mm -hmm. What that means is that if we have a group of 40 people who fall under the category, Mm -hmm. of PDIs, we will accommodate them first. If we have spaces available, then we can consider other candidates okay. who fall outside that category. Okay. This is very, what we have We're very impressed for time, Gary. I, I just want you to give me the numbers. How many uh, candidates have been successful this time around? Quickly, one word answer. 40. 40. Of those 47 were white females. Yes. How many black, I mean, how many white males 40, were successful? The 40 is PDIs. Understand the point Daddy, of Daddy departure. No, 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 no. You need to Seven under, of them no, no, are white there females, are no white so males. there are no white males. There are no white males because the answer, they do the not fall within okay. the PDI so no. category. But do you, you understand, need to do you understand, understand that his concern, no, no, no. You Do you understand, understand Herman's that. concern no, that Herman white Herman male South understand. Africans who are up and coming, Herman who are trying to, to, to be pilots, may feel like they're being excluded? Transformation is a government prerogative, and we are not going to be apologetic about it. It is provided for within our law. He is making accusations that are completely baseless on interpretation of the law. We can have a debate about the interpretation of the law. We can look at decided case law, including the Concord decisions. Mm -hmm. He's wrong. Okay, we'll have to leave it there for now, gentlemen. Thank you so much both uh, for your time. Thank you to SAA spokesperson Gladys Gladys and Solidarity Deputy General Secretary Dirk Erman. News that moves. ENCA.com.